Okay, so we are going to talk about what's called the backside and front side of lakes. So just like we had talked about previously, you know, we, we kind of defined these areas here and we talked about hold levels, right? We talked about these uh, strong, strong and greedy hold levels, okay? So, so we have something like this. Down and, and, and saw this. And then so you have these other regions down here. So, so we're just actually going to go to a larger time frame and kind of find what we talked about before, which is like the, uh, the backside of, of, a, of a move, like the strong and greedy hold levels, right? Like if this is a strong hold level, this would be a greedy hold level as to where a strong hold level has a big reaction and a greedy hold level tries to hold through trend, right? Like this was the beginning of us starting to talk about how we can identify some of these different types of hold levels. So you kind of have to build to this because there's just so much information. So many people saw this level here, the 7690 level, and it was a, it was a great trade because we, you know, we knew that, oh, 7690 or whatever, it's going to have a big bounce. And, and so it did in that moment and people are making hundreds of percentages, you know, 600% here on, on leverage and and so forth and so forth. And then it goes after another backside level, which was right here, which was that, uh, or was it here? Actually, I think it was here. This is that uh, level that people had found. It's that backside level. So you can even go into this um, replayer here in, in the moment. And you can see where these things are, are bouncing, you know, pretty, pretty ferocious bounces, right? Like hits this level, bounces straight up within an hour for 4%. Hits this level, bounces straight up in an hour for another, whatever this is here, 4%. And then it, it kind of keeps going. And then you know, it gives another entry a little lower here. And, and so, so, so we, we already know how to find these. Like we've, we've already done this. Okay, so we can actually get out of here and, and go back to our uh, larger scope here. Let this play through. You see trend is, is uh, hit and all that. You even have the same information back here, right? You would have had like a, a weekly level back here and you would have said, okay, you have a weekly level here. That's kind of starting the valley. And then, you know, if you, if you actually go and find kind of where this is here in this range daily here and uh, you're, you're going to see the the daily level that gets attacked right there right so you're going to see the daily start to this kind of valley break here so you, you know when you're when you're looking at this you can see what starts the move which is this right here this starts the move and then you're just simply finding your 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 valley down right so this is this is the same thing we looked at right like you know you can inverse a chart and you say oh this is a backside hold level it's a knife catch and you know actually it is it's exactly that you know and there's 20% to be made here, you know, really crazy trade. We simply go back here and we see that's the backside of the move. So, you know, we always talk about this, this, the greedy hold level versus, or, or sorry, the strong hold level versus the greediest, you know, and the greediest would be, you know, somewhere down in this region, maybe even right here. I'm not too sure. Maybe even right here. So now what we're going to talk about is um, evolving that to what's called the front side and back side of like, so we have this we are going to call BS, right? This we are going to call FS for front side and back side. Because this is basically what we did. We defined front side and back side legs, right? So this is, this is exactly what we did. So whenever you're looking at these moves, there is something we do called range finding. Okay, so, so range finding looks like this. And it's all about finding the correct level. So, so range finding looks like this. You identify where moves start and end, right? So we can you know, delete that. And we can identify where these moves start and end, right? So, so we know that this move starts right here, right? Like you, you can see where the wick is that starts the move, right? Like you can see. So we know this is called range finding. We define a range, right? We're trying to find what range it falls under. So this is the range that it falls under. This starts that move right there. And this is kind of the, uh, the bottom of the move, right? Or you could even say that this is the uh, next hold level inside of it. Or, or I guess you would actually say this one here. I missed that one here. So this, this, this is the range, the bottom of the move, kind of to the backside of the hold. Technically, if we were looking at this and, and we deleted this, right, and you flip this chart, you would be here. And this would be like your greedy level, knife catch, blah, 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 all that stuff we talked about about strength. Because then your greedy level would be right here, right? So, so then now you have your, your greedy level. But actually, we're going to start calling this backside, not, you know, greedy versus strong, because that was just terminology we used to start teaching and understanding what these things do, right? So we're going to flip this back over. I always flip my charts to just kind of get a little bit of clarity because it makes it very easy to see where these moves are going to bounce, right? So, so we're just going to simply flip the chart once again back here. And we're going to go back to finding the range, right? We know the move starts here and then the actual bounce level is there. So, so now we can go and start finding what's called its range, right? So we can start finding where these levels actually are. So, aha, we do have our first 
level right here. We have our first daily level right here, right? So you, you actually do have kind of this range that you've defined. So, so this is, and this one is BS, right? One is BS and one is FS, backside and front side. So this is the backside of the leg versus the front side of the leg. And you could have drilled down here and found the 12 hour right here. And you can see where you're redefining your range, right? Or, or the four hours, sorry, not the 12 hour. You're, you're redefining your range. You're finding the actual part of the move that's going to bounce the move, right? Because what the point of this is, is called finding the backside of a leg and finding the front side. And, and we can we can define the move just like we did here by finding where the hold level actually is, right? Like the greediest part of the move. We're always looking for the greediest parts of moves for rejection because that's where big injection comes in. So we start by range defining it here. We go to the daily and we say, oh, okay, well, this is a pretty huge bounce. What's kind of the greediest levels in there, right? And you, 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 know, you can go through timeframes here and you're on the 12 hour, so nothing has changed. And you can go to the four hour and then you can start to look in the four hour and say, oh, there, there's actually the start of the valley is here. So if you were going to bounce off the backside of the leg, you would have to define the range prior to finding the level. Okay. So then if you go into this moment here and, you know, we can just kind of rewind this to maybe here, you know, we can just go to here. That's fine. And, and, and we can see how this becomes a, a one and done, like, like your, your, your standard knife catch and it's gone. Right. So, so like this is exactly where the level is because what we're do, doing is called, called defining the range, right? So, so we're doing this on a large time frame. So we're going to do this on small time frames too in this lesson, but we have what's called the backside of the leg, which means that this would be the front side of the leg. Cause so this is the back and this is the front. So this is the greediest level up here. And this is the greediest level down here, right? So you've got the back and the front side of the leg, just like we have marked over here, BS and uh, FS one is BS, right? Um, so we have the backside and the front side. So now we're defining the range of the entire move. But first, we need to define the entire range like this. Like this is the entire range of the move. So this is where we're saying, okay, this is the start of the valley right here, right? Like uh, this, is, this is what starts that, that run up. And this is what ends that run up up here. So this is, this is the range that we first define. So when we, range, when we range find, this is the first range that we have to identify, okay? The second range is saying, okay, we need to find the backside of the leg. So that's why this is marked in BS. So this is, the backside of the leg is trying to range find inside of here and, and how we found that level when and said like, okay, we've, we've range found that level in here as, as the backside of the leg. And then we have another area, which would be from here to here, which would be the front side of the leg. So, so now we could go on the front side of the leg and, and do the same thing and find the greediest levels, right? Once this actually so, so what we're going to do is we, we've now understood how to find the ranges on the move, right? Like you, you, the top of this candle to the, to the hold level here, the top of this to its bottom of this, right? Like the, the top and bottom here. So, so even this would be like, this would be the range, right? Right in here. So this would be the front side range. This is the backside range. And then we do the same thing with this. So actually we can go do that right now. We can go to the daily and see that, okay, there's a bit of a better range in here. This is the hold level right here. It's untested as to where this is closer to tested. This is untested. So this is your untested daily, right? This would have its own backside front side combination. So even in this moment, you would have like, this would turn actually into the backside. So we're going to actually turn this into the backside because this is the backside to this front side here. You see how we took that top and we dragged it over to define this range. So this would actually be the backside strong bounce level. And then, and then we need to go in here inside, inside here and continue finding these levels. So this is the backside and this is looking like the front side from what we know now. So, so now you have a backside front side combination inside of here, right? So then we can go in here and, and take a look and see what's uh, actually untested at, at a time frame that makes sense, right? So you actually have an untested 12 hour level right here. So now you kind of have, again, going back to what we had talked about in the past, the greedy level versus the strong level, right? So, so now you have something where you're actually under, start, starting to understand where your, your two different levels are, are defining, right? And even here, you would possibly have another combination right here where this is the front side. And now this is like a combination level, backside, front side combination level. Because in, in one scenario, if this is going to get attacked and it moves through like this instantly, it might go after what this would be considered the front side. But if this gets tested and rejects, this now turns into the backside of this because this is the front side of the leg. So, so this is all about understanding where there's multiple spots where these, these, these decisions and points happen, where you have backside, front side, 
once this is hit, you have backside, front side. Once this is hit, you'd have this would be turned into the backside and you'd have a front side inside of its more minute range. So, 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 you know, in the moment that this is hit, then you would even, let's copy and paste this one here. Let's grab this level right there, copy, paste it. Then you'd, you'd have a range between here where this now would turn into a backside and this would be its front side. So even here we can go into the hourly and see where the, uh, the valley is because that technically now, if we, if we actually look at this thing, it's actually the backside of a, of a valley, is it not? So, so all we've done is define the range. And aha, we have an untested, untested hourly front side, greediest point inside this move, most likely a level that's going to be rejected in the future in a very big way. Because as you're, you're now getting into the realm of where is the greediest parts of the move, right? Now you're starting to define the ranges with inside the move. You know, what's the greediest part of the move? You have your backside leg, which causes a big bounce because it's testing the first part of its range. And as you go through the, the trade, you have these different kind of levels, you know, it kind of becomes your decision. Where am I taking these trades, right? Like w which level am I taking these trades? And that part of range finding and understanding the data points, right? So you can see this was our, actually already tested here. This one is not. You can see that this held this move down, right? And, and this possibly had its own range like this to uh, this right here, which would have started the entire range of this. So, so this right here, would have been another backside front side combination. You'd have to go in and do your time frame and work because the stuff takes sometimes quite a bit of a time investment to find these things, but then you find perfect points, right? Like you can see it right here. You have the perfect bounce here. Like this, you have this here, which is a data point in the future right here. And then alternatively, this one here afterwards. So you test, test, right? Come back, test this range. Have not tested this because this backside range to this front side held which causes you to dump down, retest this range again, right? So, so you can see where the range finding is, is a very tactile tool and you can have a very accurate response in, in, in your decision making, just, just like when we look at you know, range finding this part of the move here and we say, oh, there's the daily, where's the range on the daily? What's the greediest level inside that daily? Where do we find the range? And so you have a moment that happens like this, where, where you see, a one and done. People are waiting here with hundreds of millions of dollars and it goes down, you know, 18% pretty quickly. You know, you could just play this out and you see how it, uh, it reacts. And it should have this type of reaction appropriate to the level, right? Like appropriate to the level when we kind of rewind back and look. So, so then you can just let this play out here and, and you'll see like, and what does it attack, right? It attacks its own range, right? It attacks its own range right here. So, so it, it is attacking its own, you know, combination range that, you know, we won't worry about finding this one because we would very much just be doing the same thing over. And maybe that would be a good exercise for you to find, you know, where that range exists. So, so let's talk about how we find that range again. So, so what we would do is we would start by going to a higher time frame and saying, okay, here's the range right here. You have the bottom of the move here and you have the top of the move here. So now you have a range that exists somewhere in here, right? Now you have a, a range that you can start to define. So, so then you'd have kind of like backside, front side, right? Like backside here, front side here, right? So the front side got tested next, or, or sorry, <laughs> the opposite, actually. It would be, I got to turn this around, even I confuse myself. It would be kind of like this. Here, let's zoom in here go to a smaller time frame because the one hour is not enough. There's not enough information here. So you'd have something like backside, front side, right? You'd have, you'd have something like that where, where this is defining the range of, of those levels, right? Backside, front side combination, or you just have backside, backside, or relatively even deeper, you would have something like this. We'd have to go to a higher time frame to find this now. Then you'd have something like this where you have, well, that's backside and front side. So in this case, it would be inside this range somewhere. So here you would define the parameter backside and then the front side is going to be inside this candle here somewhere. So actually, if we went here like this and we went into smaller time frames, we could see where this guy here was the backside, like the, the strong level, just like we looked at in the past, that's this, the, the, the level of strength. But now we can actually have real terms. Now that we're getting a little deeper into this thing, we can have uh, real terms, which the front side would now be here. 
the front side is actually here. And this is a combination backside front side, because once this is broken, it's going to go after this backside, which is going to be the front side of this piece of the move. And I know, I know very confusing, but uh, just hang in there. <laughs> It'll all make sense. And, uh, or it already does maybe. So you have kind of a front side to start with. So it would be just like this. It would just be a front side. And then once it's, it's tested, it turns into backside, front side combination level because it has its own frontal side of the move, right? So it has its own kind of frontal side of the move like this, front side. You have this range of combinations of, of, of to where these levels are, are hit. So, so that when you, you, know, you look at backside, front side, backside, front side combination after it gets hit, you'll see very much the same range as all tested all, all within here. Like the, you're going to have the same range defining criteria in here and every piece of this move, right? Like every piece of this move is going to have this range defining criteria. Oh boy, this might take a while. We're uh, quite, quite a ways back there. Uh, so, so anyways, you can see where this level has its own range that gets hit. This will have its own range that gets hit. So let's go and dissect one that has actually had a range that, that gets hit. So then you'd have something like this. This is the backside of the move, right? Let's go find the front side of the move. You know, the back side. This would be a combination level right here because it's not going to be the final one. So this would be back side, front side, right? Like this is going to be, and, and we'll label these so we can see how it reacts. Back side. This will be a back side, front side combination level. And then maybe we can even go into a smaller time frame here and see what happens on a, on a little time frame. You'd have front side right here. So you have front side. So you can see that the front side was uh, tested perfectly, right? So you can see you'd have front side right here. You know, you can go back to this and you can see where the, uh, the combination exists because you've defined the range, right? You've looked at this on the larger chart and you've defined the range and we're going to use maybe a yellow color for this to define the range. We're going to use yellow like this. So, so it always starts with defining the range and we can define the range by this point here to this point here, right? Like the top and bottom of the move. And it has a combination of ranges inside of it. Even in here, if this is the uh, bottom of the move, I would actually go in here and start looking in, in really small time frames and saying like, okay, here's the bottom of the move. You've got some untested stuff in here, right? Like th this, this would have actually, you can see where the, the range is defined, right? Like you, you can see where the range is defined. The, the range is defined as the bottom of the move, the top of the move. So, so, so now you start to have even again, you know, we did this stuff up here, but let's even take it back a step. So now you can see even here, you would have like this, you would have backside of the range and we'll leave that one in yellow. Not that it's defining the move, but it's, it's a good criteria. And then you would have like the front side, backside, front side, right? So let's kind of see how this uh, plays out. So there's the backside being tested, right? The backside is trying to be tested to hold. So that backside range is being already tested, right? So if this is gone, then you'd have a combination like this, right? Because that, that's already done. Then you'd have, you know, two levels here, which would be something like this, backside, front side. You, you could possibly test this, but I would probably go for the greedier levels. You, you know, you're on one minute candles here. So what I would do here in this case is I would go to like a, a three minute candle and I would see wh where the range exists and you have like a, a kind of a, a tiny range in here. So, you know, I would look at this and I would see what happens here. Well, perfect, right? Range is tested. Backside is tested. You'll go after the front side next, right? So, so then we can just let this play out. And this would even have its own range. We know this is tested. We can just move. This is, you know, that's where we get this from. Maybe we'll leave that one there and use this one. And then, and then this, this would be like the backside of this range, front side. So you can see how this is like a combination level as to where this is going to be the backside in the future. This is going to be the front side to this backside. And then this turns into the backside, front side combination to this front side of the move, right? Like you've got the front side right there. So this, this is what we call range defining. So this is a very advanced and tactile technique that's that's used so you can see even the criteria that's hit and, and, and when these levels are broken where they're breaking right like you can see now we have decision points now now you take all this knowledge and you can turn these into decision points where it's like oh i should either sell here or i should buy here i should probably buy this level and, and if i want to sell a level i should sell this one or i can sell the what's defining the range here and and you have very specific points because there's there's only 1% of the charts you should buy in 99% of the action. But those 1% points exist constantly, right? 